studying um, this work led to the idea of talking about uh, egos, that is, embedded growth obligations. Now, embedded growth obligations are the way in which institutions plan their future predicated on legacies of growth. And since the period between the end of World War II in 1945 and the early 70s had such an unusually beautiful growth regime, many of our institutions became predicated upon low-variance, technology-led, stable, broadly distributed growth. Now, this is a world we have not seen in an organic way since the early 1970s. And yet, because it was embedded in our institutions, what we have is a world in which the expectation is still present in the form of an embedded growth obligation. That is, the pension plans, the corporate ladders are all still built very much around a world that has long since vanished. We have effectively become a growth cargo cult. That is, once upon a time, planes used to land uh, in the Pacific, let's say during World War II, and indigenous people looked at the airstrips and the behavior of the air traffic controllers, and they've been mimicking those uh, behaviors in the years since as ritual, but the planes no longer land. Well, in large measure, our institutions are built for a world in which growth doesn't happen in the same way anymore. All right. What then happened was is that a different structure, which I have termed the gated institutional narrative, came to become repurposed. Now, the gated institutional narrative is like an exchange, a financial exchange, if you will, except it's an exchange of information and ideas. And in order to actually participate in this particular special conversation, you need to have a seat on the exchange. That is, you need to write for an important paper like the Wall Street Journal, or you need to be uh, a senator or a congressman so that you can gain access to the news media, or you need to be sitting at a news desk. In any of these situations, whether you're a professor or a reporter or a politician, if you can gain a seat inside of the gated institutional narrative, you can attempt to converse with other people within that particular conversation. The rest of us do not really have the same level or kind of access to this highly rarefied discussion. And I've previously compared this to what we would term a promotion inside of the world of professional wrestling. It's an agreed upon structure in which people often agree to simulate dispute uh, rather than actually have disputes because somebody could get really seriously injured. But they're in fact working together to produce a an engaging and regular product for mass consumption. The problem with this gated institutional narrative is that in general, it doesn't contain the most important ideas. And that is where the gating function comes in. The most important ideas are likely to be the ideas that are most disruptive. What if the entire food pyramid, for example, was wildly off? What if fats were not the great danger we thought they were. And those waving uh, fields of wheat that are fabled in American song, in fact, give rise to carbs, which are very dangerous to us all. So if everything were inverted, let's say, where in a world where instead of banishing uh, volatility during the so-called great moderation before 2008, we were actually building the tinder for the world's largest financial forest fire. What if, in fact, we had all sorts of things exactly backwards and completely wrong? What if diversity wasn't always a sign of our strength, but sometimes a sign of our weakness? What if, for example, immigration, uh, far from being an issue of xenophobes versus xenophiles, was actually an instrument of redistribution, having very little to do with xenophobia or xenophilia to begin with? These sorts of ideas can't be entertained inside of the gated institutional narrative. And that's where the gating function comes in. What was originally a function intended to ensure quality control of the narrative became an instrument for something else. And this is where I want to introduce the most important concept that I think we will be dealing with on a going forward basis in 2020 on this program, the DISC. What is the DISC? The DISC stands for the Distributed Idea Suppression Complex. 